I'm going to go through question one from the 2015 uh, free response questions. So we're starting off with this uh, kind of an odd cell, and it's a metal air cell. Um, and the idea here is there's oxygen going in over here, and there's a piece of metal over here. And it says that it's an alkaline paste, you know, so it means it's, got a, it's very basic. And uh, we're given some reduction potentials. Now this kind of a, a zinc uh, cell, you know, air cell, actually does exist. And so um, we can look at this. Just finding on the internet, I found a picture that there is kind of a modern zinc air cell that's around, but that's not what we're talking about. So, first question down here is early forms of the metal air cells use zinc as the anode. Uh, zinc oxide is produced as the cell operates. So, what is the cell potential for the zinc air cell? So, if we want to use the cell potential, we're looking at this equation where we have the oxygen, and we have this equation where we're talking about zinc. So those are the clues that these are the two that we want to use. The other ones would be for sodium and calcium. And if this is, they're giving us the overall reaction. Uh, so if we know what we're doing, we could just say right now, well, the, the uh, voltage of the cell is simply going to be the difference in these two uh, potentials. So positive 0.34 minus negative 1.31 that's going to give us the answer, which is 1.65 volts. Now, if we kind of want to see, well, where did that come from, we could write down our two equations. I've written down the oxygen equation. Since this has the greater reduction potential, then it's going to be our cathode. And it's going to be used as is. Uh, the zinc cell, since it's the lower of the two, then it's going to be our anode because that's where oxidation takes place. So we have to do a couple things. One is we're going to switch the equation around, which I've done down here, and we're going to change the sign because now this is would be called our oxidation potential instead of our reduction potential. So one way of doing a, a cell potential is to say that the E of the cell is equal to the reduction potential plus the oxidation potential which you can see is going to be the same thing as subtracting negative uh, 1.31, or you can change the sign and add it. You get the same answer either way. So the answer is 1.65. So back to our equations. If we take the second equation and flip it around, and we want to uh, combine these two equations, we can see that the bottom one really needs to be multiplied by 2. So instead of 2 electrons, we're going to say 4, 2 waters, 2 zinc oxides, we're going to change this to four hydroxides and change this to two zincs. Now we can go back and uh, eliminate things that are on both sides, four hydroxides. Uh, we can say we have two waters and two waters, four electrons, four electrons. So what we have left is oxygen uh, plus two zincs gives us two zinc oxides, and that is their overall equation. So that's where it came from. Okay, really common error for students is the idea that you do not, it's not like Hess's law, you do not multiply this voltage by 2, because these voltages are not really inherent in the equation. These voltages come from comparing each of these half cells to a standard cell. And because they've all been related, you know, uh, compared to a standard cell, all the 2s and the 1s, those have all been taken into account already. So the fact we multiply this by 2 uh, does not affect the voltage at all. So we just use the voltages as is. Okay, the second question is the electrolyte paste contains hydroxide ions. On the diagram, uh, draw an arrow to indicate the direction of the migration of the hydroxide ions. Well, we can see what's happening is that the hydroxides are produced on the oxygen side, and then they're used up when they get over to the zinc side. So going back to our equation, what we need to do is say hydroxides are migrating to the left. That's all we have to say. So we just draw that in here in the paste. That would be good. Now students we saw, uh, you know, would draw them way up here sometimes. And as long as they didn't make it look like it was going through the wire, because some students did think that, that would lose them the point. But as long as they had a nice left arrow, 
then uh, they would get credit. But hopefully they'd write it in the paste because that's where the hydroxides are actually going. Okay, for part B, a fresh zinc air cell is weighed on an analytical balance before being placed in a hearing aid for use. As the cell operates, does the mass of the cell increase, decrease, or remain the same? Then justify your answer in terms of the equations for the overall cell reaction. Well, the idea here is that the oxygen is actually coming from the outside. So because the oxygen is coming from the outside, then the mass of the battery, of the cell, is actually going to increase as you go along. So it does it does it, uh, increase. So we're going to, have to say increase. And this one here, you had three possibilities. If they just said cell increases, that got on one point. But the justification. So you need to say something about you know the oxygen is coming from the outside, and therefore the uh, value of the cell is going to increase. Now some students said you know that these are sealed, and if they thought it was sealed, and they said that it remains the same, they could get one of the two points. They were wrong that it was not sealed. It mentions that it's open to the air, but they could get one point for the correct uh, justification for their wrong answer. Okay, for part C, the zinc air cells taken the top of the mountain where the air pressure is lower. Will the cell potential be higher, lower, or the same? So if we look at our overall reaction, we say here is some oxygen Okay, and for this reaction to go, we need to uh, let the, uh, you know, that if we could increase the oxygen concentration, then that would drive the reaction forward a little bit, uh, and that would make us a uh, higher voltage. But we're not. If we're going to go up into the mountains with lower elevation, I mean, so if we're going to go into a higher elevation, then the cell potential is going to drop. So again, we're looking here for the answer that it's going to be lower. And how come? Because, you know, at higher elevation, there's less oxygen, and so our concentration of the oxygen drops down. Now, why? How do we justify that? The real answer here, we need to go back to Q. Okay, and Q is the concentration of, let's go back to our reaction. Okay, here's a metal over oxygen, so metal, metal, and gas. So it's just going to be 1 over the concentration of oxygen. And so if uh, this value of Q is going to be getting greater, because if oxygen gets smaller, then the value of this is going to be larger. So if the Q value gets larger, then that is going to make the voltage get lower. And you can really kind of go back and talk about the Nernst equation, uh, not real calculations, but just you know qualitatively. And you can see that the value, larger value of Q is going to make this a lower voltage. A quick note here, if students were uh, trying to justify their answer using Le Chatelier's principle, uh, they did not get any points because this was not an equilibrium system. In fact, an equilibrium battery is a dead battery, and this is not a dead battery. Okay, going on to part D. Okay, metal air cells need to be lightweight for many applications. In order to transfer more electrons with a smaller mass, sodium and calcium are investigated as possible as potential anodes. So a one gram sample of which of these metals would transfer more electrons? So now we're just going to do a calculation. So justify with calculations. So we have to say if I had one gram of sodium, then we need to change it to moles. And if I had one gram of calcium, we need to change it to moles. And let me see if I can fit that in. Um, I'm going to try to fit it in up here above. If I write out these two equations kind of quickly and very messy, sorry, then if I say I've had one gram of sodium, I use the molar mass of sodium, and then we have to take into account the fact that for every mole of sodium, that uh, since it forms a one plus ion, there will be one mole of electrons. So that's how many moles of electrons we can transfer with one gram of sodium. When we do the same for calcium, we have a larger molar mass, so we get fewer moles, but we get two moles of electrons for every one mole of calcium, so we end up with 0 0.050 moles of electrons versus 0 0.043 moles of electrons. So if we said that calcium is going to be the one that gives us the greater uh, number of moles of electrons per gram, that's the correct answer, and that was worth two points. 
One is just did the students, you can you see that they did uh, moles of each of the two one, uh, one gram samples, that's good. And then did they realize that there were two moles of electrons being transferred in calcium versus one mole that was worth the second point. So that was two points. Okay, last part here, write the electron configuration for a zinc atom in the ground state. So zinc, it might be easier if we looked at a uh, chart, and we can see here's zinc. So we can see what's going to happen with the zinc. We're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Now students could write it that way. They could say 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2. That would be fine. Or they could do the shortcut version where they say argon, 4s2, 3d10. Any of those would have been appropriate. Then it says, from which sublevel are electrons removed when a zinc atom is oxidized? So when the atom becomes an ion, then we are going to lose the outermost electrons first. So we're going to lose it from the 4s rather than from the 3d. And that's this whole question.